the most glass characters of all time three olama sama we haven't watched olama sama in a minute but we back we back to watch some more olama sama because we missed you man we missed you for for sure for sure over here on this channel you ain't went nowhere it's it's been me it's been me and my priorities been a little fucked up yeah huh I don't know where you found that clip, but that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. So in our last installment of this series, we went through a plethora of characters like Mihawk, Gojo, Saitama, etc. However, mm -hmm. I'd be lying if I didn't say that that video missed some pretty obvious candidates. Hey! Don't worry, we're gonna get to your fans shortly. I really felt obligated to don the mask once more and become a hater yet again. And plus, some of y'all did mention that you were waiting for this part anyways. So this video will be one of the few times where I'll break my golden rule of spamming a certain type of video. Also, get ready, because a lot of the characters in this video are heavy hitters, because the first character we're talking about is Son Goku. Now, Goku was a very yes, clear sir. thing to put in this series due to the fact that he's like the most popular anime character of all time. Shoot, he's one of the most popular characters in general. A pure-hearted Saiyan, protector of Earth, and contrary to popular belief a good father and a lot of people were wondering why i didn't put him in the last one the main reason was because we had recently found out about akira toriyama's death about two weeks before i made the video and it was still fresh in my mind so i didn't want to come off as disrespecting dragon ball fans so soon after the passing of a man who played a massive well we was not taking no disrespect i ain't gonna lie to you we weren't taking that ill from nobody a lot of people tried it on twitter and whatnot nobody was not taking that role in mine and many other people's childhoods. However, it's important to know that we can talk about the Goku Blazers without disrespecting the work of Akira Toriyama. With of that course. being said, we can start off with the infamous meme, Can He Be Goku Though? This oh meme was God. derived from Goku being one of the stronger characters in fiction, and boy do the Goku Blazers abuse it. Now when you hear the meme sparingly, it's pretty funny, but at a certain point, it doesn't even feel like a joke anymore, and people are genuinely just implementing Goku into random conversations that didn't include him in the first place. <laughs> Goku Blazers have ran this joke into the ground so much that the strength of Goku is seemingly the only thing that people care about nowadays it's really unfortunate too y'all really be making this man look like an extremely one-dimensional character when all you do is glaze his strength and transformations for and sure I and i ain't gonna lie i've watched the entire show i've watched all of dragon ball and it's like y'all y'all have made me even fall off of goku a little bit and i know the character's like way deeper than just the first dimension of like it's crazy it's crazy like y'all make me not want to like goku how much y'all glaze goku bro. I know that Goku is strong, but there are stronger characters out there. If you only talk to a Goku meat writer, you think that Goku is the strongest character in fiction or something. Like, I'm sorry, but Goku isn't soloing all of Marvel or DC like some of his fans may say. Don't even get me started on Superman versus Goku. Some Goku fans will get so mad about the results of the versus battles between these two, but fail to realize that Superman was doing some crazy things throughout his runs. Oh, Superman God, will beat man. the brakes off of Goku, and that's perfectly fine. Some oh, of these God. Goku players dead be losing sleep over this fact. You know what's crazy? I've been saying that since Death battle put out the first goku versus uh superman i've been saying that my friends gassed me for it all these years bro still do it doesn't take away anything from his character unless of course you boiled him down to a device to make random arguments with people online about him beating other fictional characters goku fans will also rant about everyone copying goku and how x character copied goku because their hair changes color when they transform we know that dragon ball z has influenced and has inspired many authors however calling something mm -hmm. a straight up copy or ripoff is disingenuous to the actual creativity some of these creators have put in goku himself has been inspired by other characters like sun wukong the monkey king or even superman when you compare their origin stories there's nothing wrong with inspiration. Some Goku fans just refuse to acknowledge that it exists. Then finally, the worst part about some of these Goku Glazers is that some of them have never even watched Dragon Ball Z at all and just start talking about things that never actually happened. There are times where you can't even have good discussions with these guys because a lot of their claims are just baseless. The only Dragon Ball Z they've consumed is Dragon Ball Z Abridged, which is really good, don't get me wrong, but it has caused irreparable brain damage to some of these Goku fans. For our next character, we got Luffy, who doesn't... That's true. I do know some people that's only watched the bridge and never watched the actual show. They think Goku's some type of dumbass. Like, seriously. I really have many aspects that I see people glaze personally. A lot of Luffy glazers will often yap about him being the best character in all of fiction, which is kind of a cliff jump to me, but I can't necessarily blame someone for having that opinion. If that's what you genuinely think, you honestly got it. He's a main character one of the biggest series of all time. His personality and characterization has never been portrayed as annoying to me, and his development and response to trauma over the series has been great. A lot of the time, though, the Luffy fans and the Naruto glazers will have wars over whose ideals are better while trying to dunk on the others. Actually, both try to put 
put down other characters while being obnoxious about their own. I just ain't put the Naruto Glaciers in this video because they so happen to be less in number. And I guess we should address the 800 year old elephant in the room, Gear 5. This transformation has to be the most hyped up thing in the anime community in the last 5 years or so. The way people were yapping about this being the best transformation of all time is flagrant. They said that this transformation was going to break the internet like UI Goku. It didn't. And that this transformation was better than Super Saiyan. It isn't. Matter of fact, if you know anyone who believes that Gear 5 is over, Most definitely not. For Super Most Saiyan, disassociate with them rapidly or check them into a mental institute. Moreover, the actual abilities of the transformation itself get meat ridden even more because Luffy has Toon Force, which is a term that's been overused so much that it lost its meaning. There are clearly levels to Toon Force, from Looney Tunes nonsense to making sunglasses out of thin air. Like, Luffy's Toon Force is clearly weaker than what Bugs Bunny can do, and I don't want anyone to talk about this statement and say that Luffy equals Popeye in terms of Toon Force. You are lying. Luffy's Toon Force gets used so much that apparently this guy could be anyone just because of it. You can make a whole argument complete with all the sources and citations and write a 25 page paper and a Luffy Glazer will say that Toon Force solos. These guys ignore the fact that he still arguably could have lost to Kaido if Kaido hadn't been fighting so long before his encounter with Gear 5. But you know, my gripe isn't with just Luffy meat riders whatsoever. It's with a greater force than that. I have gripes with those who glaze Oda himself. Now in the comments of the last video, I saw someone talk about Oda, the author of One Piece being in the discussion for one of the most glazed characters of all time. Now Oda isn't a character at all he's in fact a real person but i don't really care i'm making an exception it's my video firstly i probably should address that i'm not a one piece hater at all like i think some of y'all believe that i genuinely hate one piece when i enjoy it quite a bit someone finna be like oh this guy always talks about one piece. same with me somebody actually asked me that too like why well, i haven't made a single one piece video on my channel actually because like when i watched it i i started watching one piece before i started watching naruto so when i really got into naruto and i watched all of naruto I kind of gravitated more towards Naruto, and I kind of just fell off of, fell off of the One Piece. I did go back and finish it, but it's just not much in about One Piece that I want to talk about. I mean, I can do One Piece videos. I actually have a couple planned on the back burner. I just, I just ain't, just ain't. One Piece, he must be obsessed, and that's true. I like the series a lot. I should clarify more often what I do hate about One Piece, though, and it's not even the series itself. It's the nonsense that a lot of One Piece fans say, and they say a lot of it. Like, for mm -hmm. example, to some people, Oda is like a god to them and have nicknamed him Gada, which is crazy meat gobbling, but I can pass it off as a joke. But for some unbeknownst reason, some believe that Oda can actually do no wrong, and he's some mastermind who's playing all of One Piece since the 90s. If you believe this, you're just blatantly ignorant. The original plan for One Piece was something like Luffy going to the Grand Line, fighting the four emperors, finding the One Piece, and calling it a story from there. There were no warlords, supernovas, none of that. Oda is just that good of a writer that he's had idea after idea after idea that he could help build upon in the plot. Like, do you seriously believe that Oda knew what Egghead was going to look like in 2001? It's actually more impressive that he's able to create ideas on the fly like this. Apparently, he created the supernovas in a short amount of time to make the Saba Odi arc more robust. There's nothing wrong with this. A lot of authors have done this in the past when they get suggested an idea, like Kishimoto with Sasuke. Another thing I think gets dragged a lot by Oda Glazers is foreshadowing. Like, I could go more in depth into another video if y'all want, but Oda is an amazing writer, so he's been able to make the plot work without something like hockey not being fully fleshed out or make callbacks to past arcs like Skypiea to make Gear 5 even more special. I love the man's work, but geez, y'all be going overboard with how much y'all believe Oda had everything planned. Before I move into the Quattro Espada, if you're enjoying the video so far and you're new, you might as well subscribe. Anyways, on to Ukiora, who has. You might as well subscribe. Oh my. God, I hate Ukiyora so much. Oh, dude, this is this this is the character I hate the most out of the entire Bleach. Ukiyora to be a top three most glazed character in all of Bleach. I don't know when it happened, but some of y'all be talking about this Ukior guy like he's really one of the top tiers in the verse. Y'all be putting him in a spot of gauntlets and people will legitimately say that he runs through them all. And we all know what Ukior glazes cling on to too, his Segunda Etapa. This mm -hmm. form has caused so many people to say that Ukior is secretly the strongest Espada, which he isn't. The common argument is that Ukior says that Aizen doesn't know about his second stage and so his number four ranking isn't accurate and therefore he's the strongest and he fought Ichigo and yada 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 just because Ukiora thinks that Aizen doesn't know about his resurrection doesn't mean that Aizen actually doesn't know this man Aizen created the Arankar and the Espada with the Hogyoku and not only that he planned all of Ichigo's fights in the previous arcs to make sure Ichigo got stronger one of these fights was against Ukiora so you Ukiora fans are telling me that Aizen planned all of this and just never knew that Ukiora had a second stage does it make sense God. for a mastermind to plan something for someone and not know the full extent of all the pieces in the plan imagine you're helping a friend with a game you created and there's a 
final boss you want him to be able to beat. Prior to this boss, there are a series of other enemies they should learn how to beat to make sure they are prepared for the final boss. And then there's one boss in the game that just happened to have a second stage that you didn't know about, even though you created the game. It just doesn't make sense. Your number is correlated with your strength. Therefore, Stark, Haribel, Baragon, and Yami are all stronger than Ukior because their numbers are higher than his. Haribel mm -hmm. might be suspect though, but for the sake of the agenda, we're putting her above him too. I know he looks cool and he had a cool dynamic with Ichigo with the idea of trying to make Ichigo give up, but he can still be all those things while also not being the number one Espada, which he isn't. Next up, we have the King of Curses, Sukuna, who's gotta be the second most glazed character in the series after Gojo. Honestly, if it weren't for Gojo existing, Sukuna would clear everyone in JJK in terms of the most meat-ridden character. Shoot, the author himself, Gege, is a Sukuna glazer. Sukuna has been portrayed to be the strongest sorcerer in history since the second episode, so some of the things are justified. But if you've read the manga, you know that this man Sukuna has had a roller coaster for his character for the past year. Spoilers for the current arc of the manga, so skip here to avoid it. But the nonsense of Sukuna not going all out had all of his fans queued up to start gobbling him for like a month. They started saying nonsense like Sukuna wasn't trying against Gojo and he's by far too strong for anyone in the series to handle, when in reality, both Gojo and Sukuna are neck and neck in strength. Like, Sukuna was definitely making himself nervous on purpose for the first time in years to finally feel something in this fight. Or, or maybe he started bleeding from his eyes to make Gojo feel better about the fight. Like, come on now. And I know Plot Kuna was also a complaint going on for a lot of people in the community, and I will admit it was very overblown at times, but I can't blame some people for saying that Sukuna had plot on his side sometimes, because it seemed like some stuff was going his way to actually progress the plot forward. Like, we can say that Sukuna is just to advance at Jujutsu Sorcery, which makes sense. What is Sukuna's end goal and all? Because at, at this point, you know, we're not here to talk about it. He's the best at it. Or we can call his so-called skill in sorcery him just being a binding vow merchant who has spammed them like Naruto has spammed Rasengan. Something that I also believe to be true is that Sukuna Glazers and Gojo Glazers are both equally annoying. And yes, I know that's a hot take. My reasoning is that since Gojo Glazers are more in number, they automatically seem to be Speaking of hot takes, y'all want me to react to that video. Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to react to that video. So more annoying to deal with. The truth is that they are two sides of the same coin, with both fans believing that they can beat anyone in fiction for some unknown reason. Both ask dumb questions like who wins versus Aizen, or my favorite, Sukuna and Maharaga versus Goku. Class, what do you think is gonna happen if Goku fights Maharaga and Sukuna? Dun 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 Dun, no, dun, 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 dun. Time's up. Goku slams his guy. At least with Gojo Glazers, they have a win con in Infinity and Hollow Purple, so they can actually be annoying with his cross first battles. Sukuna has okay. strong fire and strong cuts. He's not hurting Goku. And that's assuming he doesn't get speed blitz before he even tries to attack. I don't know. It's just crazy to me that we don't be seeing people say as much no, about no. the No, we, we know that Goku gonna let him cook. Goku definitely gonna let Sukuna him Sukuna fans when compared to Gojo fans. You Sukuna Glazers are lucky that this guy's fan base takes the brunt of the hate because some of you guys are up there with the worst of them. This segment is gonna be kept a bit short than usual, mostly because I don't really see too much Minato Glaze. And that's not me saying it doesn't exist. I just haven't come across it. Like something I commonly see Minato fans talking about is how he had no overpowered Keke Genkai or that he wasn't a reincarnation of an Otsusuki, so he was pure talent and dedication, making all the things he did that much more impressive. And can I really blame them? Those are true statements. And Naruto, we typically see a lot of other characters with some crazy advantage because of their clan or something. But Minato was able to become Hokage and become the strongest one at that, besides Naruto and Hashirama Kakashi. Just, just ignore those guys. Genuinely asking are people okay, saying the top, say. top tier or something maybe it's the flying Raijin or the run on site order that got people in a chokehold his reign as Okage wasn't anything revolutionary because of it's definitely the run on site order the run on site order every time bro it was so short to be honest I don't really see what people are talking about are you tired of your YouTube channel not getting the attention it deserves building a YouTube channel can be a very lucrative oh my this is an interesting one. The Flash? Oh, okay, okay, I think I understand now. There are some of y'all who be giving this man crazy glaze. He is not beating the Flash. I don't care if he dodged the Raikage or anything. That teleportation is not fast enough. The yellow Flash is nothing to the actual Flash. How did you delude yourself into believing this? Minato fans, you dead gotta defend yourself. Does this guy speak for you guys? Dang, this is so crazy. Bro, who's the last character on the list? Hey, bro, <laughs> this was a personal hit. List. last but certainly not least we have batman batman is one of the three most iconic superheroes of all time and easily in my opinion the most glazed character not in anime cartoons comics but in fiction i like batman but i don't really have many positive things to say about the glazers these guys are easily the most delusional fan base i've ever seen these guys will yap about batman and his prep time and how he'll be able to beat anyone with it if you watch wwe and you know who paul Heyman is it's like that type of glazing dangerous a beast slayer a conqueror hey. a conqueror a 
Oh, hey, man, it's that dude, cuz. These fans are the same people that really try to convince people that Batman would beat Kratos without prep time. Like, what are we doing here? Sure, this man is stronger than the average human, but he gets bodied by Kratos. You see Kratos pummel- Who said that? Who? Who said that? Balder right here. Yeah, each one of those hits are murking Batman on the spot. Batman fans will clamor about Gotham being so difficult to deal with with threats like Bane, Clayface, and the Joker, the Penguin. No one except Batman, the strongest and smartest character ever, is able to beat these guys. In reality, if any hero willing to murk or cripple these guys were in Gotham, Gotham would be chilling in like a month. Like, I think Symbiote Spider-Man could do some real damage in Gotham, to be honest. Honestly, Batman could probably do better in Gotham himself if he just started to use his resources better. Like, I know it's against his rules, but just start shooting people. I'm pretty sure some lead in the Riddler's chest is putting him out of commission for a little bit. We all saw how Iron Man was handling enemies in his first movie. Can Batman not do similar things? He's coming up with all these gadgets and gizmos when there's probably a more straightforward solution. It doesn't help that Batman be getting got from his riders too when he's able to fight and beat Superman. Or shoot, when he just straight up boxes up Darkseid. It's things like these that fuel the fire of Batman Glaze. A regular human shouldn't be able to do this. Like, you cannot tell me that there isn't some sort of plot involved in this. Why is Batman so strong to these guys? I am I missing something? Is there you know, this why is Batman so strong? Why is Batman so overhyped? Has been plaguing my mind for so many years. It's something that people cannot answer, but they always like dignify that Batman's the greatest superhero because he's Batman. Because with prep time, he can beat anybody. No fuck. I don't care how I don't care how much Batman preps. Superman really should have still won that fight. Unless bro has some kryptonite rays on deck to stop Superman, Superman should have actually won that fight. But I mean, let's let's keep it a buck. Superman can move at least faster than Bruce can see. Let's keep it a buck. There's some sort of power up that he got in the new issue that made him so strong. Why can't he beat everyone? If your answer is because of money and technology, then why is Gotham such a problem for him? Another thing a lot of Batman glazes do is that they will treat a lot of the ideals of Batman and take them to heart as if he's a sane individual. Batman has done a lot of messed up things throughout his various comics. And he's not sane at all. Batman is issue deep with the issues and fans just go with it batman is insane he just hides it well there's of course the sheer absurdity of the billionaire dressing up as a bat to fight criminals because his family got murked and he still hasn't gotten over the trauma which he probably should get more therapy for he also quite literally does the same thing over and over again and expects a different result when handling some of his villains y'all should have known this was getting brought up but what is the fans defense behind the handling of the joker are we saying that it's because of plot my bad we actually can't say that though because if we assume joker has plot armor then we have to assume a lot a lot of the times Batman should have got murked is also plot armor. And we all know Batman has none of that. Personally, I've just accepted that these two are crazy people along with the tippity top of the Batman glazes. Batman's in Gotham. Everybody in Gotham is crazy. All the villains are crazy. Why wouldn't the heroes be crazy too? Why wouldn't the heroes be a little off? Makes sense. Makes sense to me. Some of the Batman glazes have ruined his character, and honestly, that's rough to see for one of the most popular characters of all time. Okay, so what's that like? Six, seven characters I talked about today? So now I think I got all the main offenders for real, for real. I'm trying to upload more often. I got more videos queued up for this month. I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and if there are other characters I didn't mention, just tell me them and why you think it's the case. With that being said, have a great day, and peace out. I said I wake up in the morning and turn my trap on.